First Flight, Chapter 2, Nelson Mandela, A Long Walk to Freedom. This chapter has been taken from Nelson Mandela's book, Nelson Mandela, A Long Walk to Freedom. It provides us a glimpse of the early life of Nelson Mandela, his education, 30 years in prison and the pains he had suffered in his young age. The chapter recounts his fight for the freedom for his own people who were tortured by whites. In this chapter, Mandela gives two contradictory pictures of his own country, one in which the blacks were tortured and suffered quietly, and second, the blacks will be free to live the life of their own. Nelson Mandela, first black president of South Africa, who fought for the equal rights of the black. He suffered a lot of pain for the freedom. Zenani, daughter of Nelson Mandela, accompanied him on his inauguration day. She was very much close to him. Thabo Mbeki, first deputy president of South Africa, who was very close to Mandela. Mr. Declerk, second deputy president of South Africa. The inauguration. It was 10th May, the day of oath, with a bright and shiny sun. Nelson Mandela was supposed to take oath as the first black president of South Africa. A large number of leaders all from all over the world had gathered there to be the witness of the swearing-in ceremony of Nelson Mandela as the first black president. The inauguration ceremony took place in a big open building in Pretoria where the first democratic non-racial government was to be installed. The swearing-in ceremony of Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela was accompanied by his daughter Zenani. Mr. Declerk was the first person who took oath as second deputy president followed by Mr. Thabo Mbeki who swelled as the first deputy president of South Africa. Nelson Mandela was the last person who swelled as the first black president of South Africa. He pledged to obey and uphold the constitution and to devote himself to the well-being of the people. He also promised to make the nation free from poverty, deprivation, suffering and all sort of discrimination. When Mandela had taken oath, South African jets displayed the military power. It, was, uh, showed, it also showed the loyalty of military to democracy. The highest military generals saluted him. He recounted that they would have arrested him many years before. It was followed by the playing of two national anthems. The whites sang Nkosi Skelel, the old song, and the black sang Daystem, the new song which marked the end of the ceremony. Nelson Mandela reminiscences about days gone by, which will soon be the part of history where the whites had formed a system of racial dominance against the blacks. It was the basis of the harsh societies which is now overturned. He says that the policy of apartheid created a deep and lasting wound on his country and its people. Now it is the system that recognized the rights and freedom of all people. Now let's have a look at question and answers. Where did the ceremonies take place? Can you name some public buildings in India that are made of sandstone? The ceremonies took place in the campus of the Union Building of Pretoria. The Parliament House in Delhi, the Rashtrapati Bhavan in Delhi, the Supreme Court of India in New Delhi and Madras High Court in Chennai are some examples of Indian public buildings that are made of sandstone. Second question, can you say how 10th May is an autumn day in South Africa? 10th May is an autumn day in South Africa because on this day there was the largest gathering of international leaders on South African soil 
for the installation of South Africa's first democratic non-racial government. Question 3. At the beginning of his speech, Mandela mentions an extraordinary human disaster. What does he mean by this? What is the glorious human achievement he speaks of at the end? By human disaster, Mandela means to say that colored people have suffered a lot due to discrimination in the hands of whites. He considered it as great, glorious human achievement that a black person became the president of a country where the blacks are not considered as human being and are treated badly. What does Mandela thank the international leaders for? Mandela felt privileged to be the host to the nations of the world because not too long ago, the South Africans were considered outlaws. He thus thanked all the international leaders for having come to witness his investiture as president. Since this event could be considered as a common victory for justice, peace and human dignity. What ideals does he set out for the future of South Africa? Mandela set out the ideals of poverty, alleviation, removal of suffering of people. He also set the ideals for a society where there would be no discrimination based on gender or racial origins. Question 6. What do the military generals do? How has their attitude changed and why? The highest military generals of the South African Defence Force and police saluted Mandela and pledged their loyalty. Their attitude towards blacks had taken great change. Instead of arresting a black, they saluted him. Why are two national anthems sung? On the day of the inauguration, two national anthems were sung, one by the whites and the other by the blacks. This symbolized the equality of blacks and whites. How does Mandela describe the systems of government in his country? In the first decade, and in the final decade of the 20th century. In the first decade of the 20th century, the white-skinned people of South Africa patched up their differences and erected a system of racial domination against the dark-skinned people of their own land, thus creating the basis of one of the harshest and most inhumane societies the world had ever known. In the last decade of the 20th century, the previous system had been overturned forever and replaced by one that recognized the rights and freedoms of all peoples, regardless of the color of their skin. What does courage mean to Mandela? For Mandela, courage does not mean the absence of fear, but a victory over fear. According to him, Brave men need not be fearless but should be able to conquer fear. Which does he think is natural to love or to hate? For Mandela, love comes more naturally to human heart than hate. What twin obligations does Mandela mention? Mandela mentions that every man has twin obligations. The first is to his family, parents, wife and children. The second obligation is to his people, his community and his country. What did being free mean to Mandela as a boy and as a student? How does he contrast these transitory freedoms with the basic and honourable freedoms? Like any other kid for Mandela also, the freedom meant a freedom to make merry and enjoy the blissful life. Once everybody once anybody becomes an adult, then antics of childhood look like transitory because most of the childish activity is wasteful from an adult's perspective. Once you are adult, then someday you have to earn a livelihood to bring the bacon home. Then only you get an honorable existence in the family and in the society. Does Mandela think the oppressor is free? Why or why not? Mandela does not feel that the oppressor is free because, according to him, an oppressor is a prisoner of hatred. 
who is locked behind the bars of prejudice and narrow-mindedness. He feels that both the oppressor and the oppressed are robbed of their humanity. Thank you.